That was Peter O'Neill, who stepped down after almost eight years as Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister. His resignation ended days of political unrest in the Pacific nation. O'Neill was criticized for corruption, underdevelopment, and being a leader for the elite. Now his successor needs to tackle the country's rising unemployment and declining government services. So can new Prime Minister James Marape bring change to Papua New Guinea? Let's ask Martin Namarong, who's in the capital, Port Moresby. He's a political advisor to the opposition leader. And in the city of Lai is Scott Wade, who's the bureau chief of EMTV News. Good to have you both on the program. Scott Wade, let me start with you. Is this a new dawn under the new prime minister? Well, really, it's uh, quite difficult to say at this point because it's going to be a two-year uh, journey for the government between now and the elections in 2022. Um, so they're going to have to deliver on a lot of the promises they've made uh, since taking office a few weeks ago. And uh, James Marape has been very uh, strong in, in the sense that he's, he's stated quite clearly that uh, resource projects will have to be scrutinized. Um, the amount of royalties and amount of uh, payments that Papua New Guineans get will have to be reviewed. So it's, it's a big, big task that he has to deliver on. Um, he may not be able to do everything in the, in the next two years, um, but the, he may be able to put in place mm -hmm. uh, policy frameworks uh, that may be able to last beyond the elections. Uh, and him coming back as prime minister or the, the same cabinet coming back uh, in its current form is another question altogether. Right. So it's a totally, yeah. Yeah. So, Martin, when we talk about scrutinizing the exports, the resources, the kickbacks and the tenders and, and so on and so forth, does everybody agree that the country has these natural minerals and resources and natural gas, they, they have the exports, but that has not reached the people and there has been too much corruption. At the very least, is everybody on the same page with that? When the O'Neill regime came into power, it had a record three billion US dollar uh, budget. Uh, that increased to about four to five billion US dollars. But the increase in the in the budget was not translated into sustainable human development. What Papua New Guinea got instead from 2007 till now was largely the development of white, white elephant and mm -hmm. a lot of corruption uh, and the decline of uh, human development indicators. Scott Wade, the prime minister promising that within 10 years, his compatriots will live in the richest black, Christian nation in the world. Fascinating definition, the self-identifying and ambition. Unpack that a little bit for me. Yeah, it, it's a very ambitious uh, project, if I may say so. Um, and it, it's, uh, it, it's quite difficult for uh, analysts in Papua New Guinea to imagine that being achieved in 10 years. Uh, the Prime Minister thinks it, it can be achieved in 10 years. He's given uh, a set of goals to members of his cabinet, which is uh, quite refreshing in a sense because Papua New Guineans have been so used to long-term plans that haven't been delivered. But this is a 10-year plan that uh, the Prime Minister feels that can be achieved. And, uh, you know, the social indicators are really working against this government. You've got high unemployment, um, high uh, illiteracy rates. Um, many of the outside centers are not connected to Port Moresby by road. Uh, food production isn't as uh, consistent as it should be. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a whole uh, set of challenges that this government has to confront and succeed over. So a tall, very, very tall order for Papua New Guinea, this Papua New Guinea government. Martin, the richest black Christian nation in the world in 10 years, is that yeah, doable think, or is, is your prime minister being very Trumpian in his statement? Uh, what Papua New Guinea saw was a change in the prime ministership. But when you look at the cabinet, what we've essentially got was a cabinet reshuffle. The same cabinet that failed to deliver 
uh, social uh, services to the people of Papua New Guinea is somehow expected to deliver the richest black Christian nation on earth. Um, but also, what does the Prime Minister mean by rich? Uh, mm -hmm. Papua New Guineans are rich in a sense that the vast majority of Papua New Guineans are land-owning people. The vast majority of Papua New Guineans uh, uh, own their forests. Um, they, they live a life that uh, is not dependent on Wall Street. Um, and so even in the you know, 2008-9 uh, global financial crisis, a lot of Papua New Guineans weren't affected by that. If we judge ourselves rich in the modern economic standards, then perhaps uh, uh, the 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 uh, ambition is uh, a little bit uh, perhaps out of this world. Right. Although Martin, given that gas exports is so crucial now to growing this economy, are you worried that the country is going to become vulnerable to fluctuations in the market? Well, I just saw a news report now that the demand for LNG from Japan is. Uh, has declined. Uh, so this is uh, the nature of the resource sector. And Papua New Guinea's economy is overly exposed to the resource sector and the fluctuations with it. In fact, if you look at, if you compare Papua New Guinea's development indicators with the fluctuations in the uh, price of minerals and oil and gas, uh, they seem to uh, uh, dance along uh, concurrently. Um, Papua New Guinea needs a much more diversified economy if it wants to be the richest black Christian nation. But also it has to address issues of governance as well so that mm -hmm. wealth does not get captured by the elite but is uh, translated down into human development indicators for all. Okay. Scott Wade, talking a little bit about politics and perhaps foreign policy. What does it say about this new government that it's just getting its feet under the desk and we've, we've seen the immigration minister say no to Australian plans to continue a contract with Paladin on Manus Island? Is it a suggestion of things changing, a new renewed confidence in the sovereignty of the country under this government? Yeah, I guess one thing is certain is that the... the PNG government in, in its current form is uh, listening a lot to what people are saying. Um, uh, again, uh, having that translated into tangible results over the course of uh, the next two years and over the course of 10 years, as, as the prime minister said, is, is, a, is a totally different matter. Um, in, in terms of relations with uh, Australia and relations with especially China, um, for the Chinese PNG relations, we're yet to see what what the foreign affairs minister will say um, in in terms of its relations with Australia. It's articulating what people are generally feeling uh, going forward. It's a it's a totally different ball game. Trying to see how that will translate into actual policy mm -hmm. going forward. So you have two two different things here. Uh, one right. is the rhetoric that's coming out of or Port Moresby, the other is the actual right. work being done. Martin, saying no to a bigger, richer neighbor, is that a sign of things to come? I think uh, time and time again, we have been all too willing to uh, rent sovereignty to Australia. Um, and, and that is typical of a lot of other Pacific Island nations. Uh, sovereignty is something that is also on rent on Nauru. Um, in terms of our foreign relations, I think the Prime Minister made a statement about focusing more on Southeast Asia. Uh, in our relationship with Australia is much more strengthened. The institutions that bounded relations, both business, families, uh, of course, political institutions, cultural institutions are much stronger than the links we have with Asia. Of course, with the rise of the Asian economies, Papua New Guinea's focus. Uh, is 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 moving that way, but we haven't built the kind of institutional relationship with Asia that we have in Australia. I think long term Papua New Guinea will still continue to maintain a very strong trading and political relationship as well as cultural relationship with Australia. Uh, the data is such that Australia is our biggest trading partner still. 
our traditional partners are still important to us, despite the rhetoric that's coming out from right. the prime minister and, and other politicians. Okay, let's keep an eye on Marafi and see how things go. Good to have you both on the show, Scott Wade and Martin Namarong. Thanks for joining us.